Got our new ruck. Now what? Today, we're gonna to talk about all the accessories that you might wanna pick up next to make your go ruck bag or other rucksack uh, even more capable from the very common outdoor activities to just carrying around town. These are my top accessories that you're gonna want right now to make sure that rucksack either fits better or is more functional in a day-to-day -day use or a fitness mode. So these are my top accessories that you might want to purchase right now. Some from GoRuck and a lot of links from Amazon, some of the cheaper options that might be out there. So these are accessories for your rucksack that you just got for Christmas. Congratulations. All right, so congratulations. You just got a rucker for Christmas, birthday, or maybe you just bought one. Maybe it was time to finally upgrade from a GR1 to the rucker. This is not a rucker review. This is all about the everything else you might want to get now that you own the rucker or a GR1 or a GR2 or a GR3. It doesn't matter what ruck you got for Christmas. This is all about all of the accessories that you could possibly want to get to make your rucking lifestyle more comfortable, more efficient, more effective, more productive. So like I said, most of this is going to be about things for the rucker, but if you use the GR1 in an outdoor fitness mode, these things will also apply. I honestly carry most of these things on all of my GR1, 2, 3 bags because a lot of these things are going to help you regardless. So let's talk about the number one thing that you're going to want to get soon, especially if you plan to be outside with your ruck, GR1 or rucker. That is going to be a way to keep yourself hydrated. You're outside, you're walking around, wintertime or summertime, you're getting dehydrated as you do those activities, so you need to stay hydrated. I am a big fan of the Camelback style of bladders. Any of the hydration source that you find are going to all fit in nicely in whatever bag you use. They're going to hang inside the main compartment and you'll be able to route this hydration hose to the front straps. And that's really how this whole thing works. You can either use the Camelback ones, I have a link in the description for all this stuff by the way, or um, GoRuck is a big fan of the Source Hydration Bladder, which again I put a link to that one as well because that's pretty popular. A lot of folks might like that because of the way the opening opens on the Source Hydration Bladder. This one's got the standard Camelback um, valve that you got to open up. I've never had any problem with these in the past, so that's why I use them. And it really comes down to personal preference, bite valve, etc. But either way, whether it's this or some sort of other bottle that you're going to keep in your ruck, uh, you're going to want to have a way to take fluids with you. When you're staying hydrated though, now that you have the bladder inside the rucksack, and you route it to the front, you're gonna to need to have a way to keep that hose from flying all over the place, smacking you in the face or your neighbor or whatever it is. So you're gonna need these uh, retention clips, web dominators by different name. I typically carry two of these on my rucksacks, one on the very top to keep the, uh, the hose just really down there and I keep one on the lower section. I usually just have it uh, cinched down so it's again not flying around so I'm kind of free to do whatever. This is really for an outdoor mode is the way what the only reason you would have these clips on there and I've given you a couple of options some from GoRuck some from Amazon. I uh, you know like to have them color coded so I usually pick different colors. The next thing you're going to want to consider is a sternum strap. Now the rucker if you bought a rucker or you just got a rucker for Christmas it came with, more than likely, a sternum strap, so congratulations, you don't have to install it, which is usually the biggest pain in the neck about the whole thing, is installing a sternum strap for the very first time. After that, it's okay. But the first one, since it came with it, bueno. If you got a GR1, GR2, or some other bag, and it didn't come with one, you're going to have to buy one. And GORUCK sells them, usually in Coyote, or this one's in black, and you have to install it yourself, which again, is going to be the biggest hassle about it. You don't need a GORUCK one. There's different colors available on Amazon. This is actually one um, by Evergoods, which has a different attachment method, which would be a lot easier to install. So that's the different kind of sternum strap. But either way, when you're rucking around, you're gonna want the sternum strap to hold that tight. If you're on a trip and you're on a long walk around the city, you may want a sternum strap to keep the, the shoulder straps from separating. So I'm a big fan of a sternum strap. Do I always use one? No, in fact, a lot of times on my rucker, because after you get your shoulders used to it, um, I don't typically have a sternum strap, but it does offer another opportunity for you to carry the ruck in a different position. 
So that's why I carry the sternum strap. Hip belts, do you need a hip belt? Well, this is my original uh, Rucker 1.0 and that's where I keep my current padded hip belt and I do use it sometimes. Um, and so I would pick one up, but here's where I use it. I don't use it on a GR1 or two or three. Three actually comes with its own. Check out this video here about the GR3, but you don't need it typically if you're just around town. Normally the way the sizing works on these bags, it doesn't sit on my hips like a backpacking pack would, so I don't necessarily use that position. However, if I am out on a long, long endurance ruck or doing an event, so for my rucker, I would include this. Because anytime that you are leaned over in a plank push-up position, doing bear crawls, something with your butt above your head, the tendency is for this bag to slide forward with the weight and maybe hit you in the head. And so this keeps that from happening. So what I would do in a normal event, I would keep this thing cinched or clipped behind me. And then if we're gonna do something, I would unclip it, put it around my waist, and then I would have that ability to not have my head being pummeled by the 30 pound plate in the ruck. The other thing it does is if you're gonna do a long endurance, so like when I did a 50 miler, uh, with this rucksack, I put this on my hips, loosened up the straps all the way so that the weight of the ruck fell on my hips. Um, wasn't very stable, so it's not something I would do uh, long term, but it definitely, it definitely gave me another position to carry the ruck in, but only again, going 50 miles was this helpful. So day to day, I don't use a hip belt, so it's something you would install and not install over time. And it does quickly install in the side webbing of the rucker, or GR1 or GR2 if that's what you wanted to do. Something else you'll consider as you move up to the next level of rucking, now that you have the ruck, the ability to stay hydrated and the th some cool things to clip on it. If you're using this in fitness mode, you're gonna end up getting a steel plate. These are uh, the 20 pound versions. They also make 30 pound versions, at least in the square short version, which this short version is the one that fits in the rucker. This taller version is one you could fit in a bullet ruck or in a GR1, that because it's taller, it won't slide around that laptop compartment. But the, you're definitely gonna want it to get a weight plate because the rucker, man, it just is designed to hold this plate perfectly without any sort of shifting around. More when I do the review of the rucker 3.0. And those are really the essentials. A way to stay hydrated, a way to route that hose uh, forward into you, a sternum strap and a hip belt. And that is really, that ends the essential list of the minimum items I would get if I was gonna do an event with the Rucker. And really, the comes down to the essentials. Now let's talk about some other additional things that would maybe be something you'd wanna consider. Carabiner clips, everyone seems to have one of these on their Ruck. Um, I have them typically on mine because you never know when this might come in handy. You can use just the standard Omega clip ones. Go Ruck sells one on their website. Uh, with their logo on it, which, you know, that's cool if you like that kind of thing. Uh, different colors, just because. Um, this one's a locking carabiner. Um, and again, link the description. So that's something that really, if you were going to climb, you would want something like this. Um, it's, I haven't really carried these on my rucksack. But I do usually hang them from the carabiners, or I've done an event where it was definitely helpful that we had these to lash different things together. So that's just a cool, tactical-looking thing. It is a carabiner for your rucksack. Expert level uh, positioning for carrying the ruck. Again, long distance, swinging your hands back and forth. People sometimes have uh, blood that pools in their hands and so they like to keep their hands above their heart. And for that, you'll want some sort of strap. And so these are two um, straps I found by Black Diamond on Amazon and uh, just loop them through the uh, molly in the front. Shoulder straps. And then it just gives you another position to hold your hands. It also provides another opportunity for you to lift the ruck off your shoulders and relieve uh, some of the blood flow underneath the, sh the shoulders. So I would wear these on a long endurance event, 50 miles, 26 miles straight out rucking, maybe even for um, a heavy, tough, or light, now called basic. These are definitely handy. I put links uh, to some other options down in the description, including one from Home Depot, which I haven't tried yet. They're about three bucks a piece and they clip on with little mini carabiners. So those are pretty cool. Um, again, pretty cheap and you can find them at any Home Depot, way cheaper than these on Amazon. Some things you might consider if you were doing a go ruck event, a heavy, tough, or basic, used to be called light, 
but I would use gloves. These are some mechanics gloves, easy to find anywhere. Another thing that you're gonna wanna get is some way to keep your stuff dry. This is a Sea to Summit bag. They make them in a range of sizes. I typically have a smaller one for maybe my wallet um, and maybe cash that I'm gonna have with me. Then I have a bigger version of this that I would maybe put an extra t-shirt and some socks in that bag. And it's really, you're gonna get wet during a GORUCK event, even if it's Arizona, they're gonna find some water for you to get into. So just be prepared and have a way to keep some of your essentials dry. Dry sack is one way to do it. This Pelican 1040 is another version and another way to do that. This is uh, would keep things from getting crushed by your weight plate. So if you were gonna have your cell phone with you or maybe a watch, you could put it in this thing, it would definitely hold it. I stopped carrying this after a while just because I don't need the bulk. I try to limit the things that I put inside the bag. And so the, the Pelican 1040 is something I just really stopped carrying. So there it is. So like I said, there's an endless supply of accessories to accessorize your rucksack no matter what your mode is whether it's everyday carry travel mode or fitness mode there's a, just countless additions out so there you go hope you like this quick look at accessories for your rucksack that you got for christmas if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel so you can see what's happening next got a lot of content coming out in the next couple weeks it's all coming out soon so subscribe to the channel so you can see what's happening next Try to continue to enjoy this beautiful weather out here in georgia Essential items that I would consider in the.